as you can see, the title of this is, Is Magic Evil? Now, occasionally I get asked this question by people, especially Christians, who think because the Bible condemns magic, it talks about magicians and magic practice and the magical arts. And uh, as a Christian, I in the past, I found myself in a quandary as to whether or not I should continue doing magic tricks. In fact, I'll show you in the Bible here a word, Revelation. Revelation 21. Revelation 21, verse 8. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. So those who practice magic arts get to live in a very hot place. So does that mean I'm going to be going to there? Well, I know of another magician that I've actually seen a live performance of. His name is Andre Cole. And he did some pretty amazing things when I saw him in his live performance. He actually made a, a, a very large statue of the uh, Statue of Liberty. He made it disappear on stage. And he also levitated himself up into the air. And he had the same, the same quandary, the same issue that he was dealing with was, you know, is can I be a magician doing magic tricks on a stage and be a Christian? Are they, are they incompatible with each other? Well, to, clear, to clarify, in order to answer that question, we need to answer what kind of magic are we even talking about? Now, there's a man by the name of Alistair Crowley who ended up making this distinction himself by changing the spelling of the word magic by adding the K to the end instead of M-A-G-I-C it's M-A-G-I-C-K he defined it as a method of manipulating the physical world through metaphysical means by employing ritual action in other words real versus pretend another another, another magician Robert Houdin he was actually the magician from which Houdini got his name he used to call himself an actor playing the part of a magician. And anybody familiar with 2001 A Space Odyssey, the author Arthur C. Clarke, he had once said that any sufficient advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So does that mean every time I'm, I'm using my iPhone, I'm actually practicing witchcraft? In order to help clear up some the confusion, let's go to another verse in the scripture. Um, Ezekiel 13, 18. Hmm, I thought I marked it, but I guess I didn't. Let me find it again. Ezekiel 13, 18. 18. La 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 la. Here we go, Ezekiel. And then 13, 18. And say this, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Woe to the women who sew magic charms on all their wrists and make veils of various lengths for their heads in order to ensnare, and to, in order to ensnare people. Read this again. It says, Woe to the women who sew magic charms on their wrists and make veils of various lengths for their heads 
in order to ensnare people. And notice it says make veils for their heads. Now, is it a sin? Is it wrong to wear a veil? Of course not. Therefore, the magic is a magic is a charm, something that's bad to wear. No, but it's look at the purpose behind their creation is to ensnare people. They're used for it's the purpose for which they're created to do something to do harm to someone else. Now, on an earlier YouTube posting that I've done on uh, Harry Houdini, that was on October 1st, I was reading about Harry Houdini from a children's book. And Harry would he would expose these people who did seances. Anything where is there? Where am I at here? He would expose people who did seances. Because they would they actually took advantage of people who lost a loved one and would these people would pay a lot of money to sit in a seance and then this supposed medium would be able to bring back their loved one so they could talk to their loved one or their loved one can somehow communicate from beyond the grave but he kind of discovered after hundreds of attending hundreds of seances that they were just using magic tricks trickery to fool these people into thinking they were really bringing back their loved ones now as i mentioned andre cole also has a book called magic miracles or magic and there he talks about spiritual healers now, these people would play doctor. They would pretend like they would get people to believe that they could actually heal them th through spiritual means. And they would do like magic tricks, like they would like reach right in, like they're reaching into a person's body and removing a cancer from their, from their body. But they're using sleight of hand magic tricks to do these kinds of things, to deceive these people. And there's another magician as well. You may you probably have never heard of called ja, Jasper Maskelin, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly. M A S K E L Y N E. Now he was actually he's an interesting, very interesting character. He, during World War II, he was actually um, an officer in the British military in North Africa during World War II. And he, he didn't want to just do magic tricks to entertain the crowds. He wanted to have, have an active part in the war efforts. And so he, he did some pretty amazing things that makes David Copperfield's making the da Statue of Liberty look like child's play. Like he actually made the Suez Canal disappear in order to fool the Germans because they kept bombing the canal and the, the British couldn't get their, get their ships through there. So he had to bas basically make it disappear. But one of the things near the beginning of, of, of the, uh, the confrontation there in North Africa was the, the, they needed the, Great Britain needed to have a way through the Middle, because this was during the Middle East, way through the lands, uh, basically controlled by the, the people who live there. There was a, uh, a leader there, an Iman, that they needed, they needed him to talk to this Iman to allow them uh, safe passage through his lands, otherwise they'd be attacked by these people. And this Iman was a magician as well. He did magic tricks and things. In fact, I'll read about the situation here. Now this was over tea and cakes. And he was talking about this, where uh, Jasper is talking about what he's gonna do to try to, to allow this Iman to uh, let the British troops safely pass through his lands. So, so over tea and cakes, he outlined the situation. The imam, imam, or imam, imam of the whirling dervish tribe, an aged and revered leader, had threatened to declare a jihad, a holy war, if one British soldier set foot in dervish territory. This was a serious problem. The imam was a god to his well-armed people and if he was harmed in any way, his fanatical followers would carry out his declaration. But if he was not convinced to withdraw the th this threat, the evacuation column would come under 
murderous air of fire. Now this was, they needed a way to be able to evacuate in case they needed to evacuate from from the Middle East there um, due to uh, German activity. So Jasper listened carefully but did not immediately understand how this mag his magic could solve the problem. The Imam claims to possess true magical powers. The colonel continued, so we thought perhaps you could go see him and convince him to be a good fellow, one magician to another, that sort of thing. Offer him some trinkets if necessary. Those people like the shiny things. Well, what do you think? Can you help us? Now he agreed to go, and it was kind of an interesting, there's an interesting read as part of the story, which continues right here, where he actually visits this imam, and it, I kind of think of it like a, like two, like in the Western days when they would go, when you have one cowboy meets another cowboy in the streets, you know, and they got their six shooter on there, about ready to kind of have a duel. So it's like the duel of the magician. So he had to like prove to this imam that he had, that he was superior when it comes to his magic abilities. But the point is you have a stage magician who does magic tricks for entertainment versus an individual who does magic tricks in order to mislead people, make them think he actually has special power so he can rule over these people. Now later on in the book, I was trying to find it and I couldn't find, find it, but later on in the book, uh, his reputation as a magician spreads throughout the, the lands of these, and these people are very, suspi uh, very, very um, superstitious. So this man came and spoke to Jasper. He's, his daughter was sick and he wanted her him to go heal her and he was going to pay him very well very handsomely to do that but he refused because he knew that he wasn't a real doctor he couldn't really do anything so then he told this man to go see the doctors on the base the real doctors and they believe in magic not in science so he he refused to do that he didn't want to go to a real doctor so Jasper felt really bad about this whole situation but so the, so this is actually shows you the, the contrast differences between of what magic can be done. Whether you know magicians, stage magicians, like Jasper and Houdini, they, oh, you know, they have integrity. They won't take advantage of people through trickery. They, so that's that's so that, I believe that's what what the Bible's talking about when it comes to the idea of magic trying to mislead people, trying to deceive people. If people know, you know, that something is a trick or is just pretend, then it's just having fun. Get to play pretend. So I hope that clears up any confusion as to whether magic is bad or not. Now, uh, next Sunday, I'm gonna post another video and this is gonna be gospel magic. Now, gospel magic basically is a way of using magic tricks and illusions to illustrate biblical ideas and so next Sunday I'm going to post a video of me showing a magic trick and then explaining a verse out of the Bible from that so thanks for watching and have a nice day